In, in case somebody's just somehow found this on the interwebs on YouTube or whatever and has no idea what we're doing here and who we are, first of all, dude, you got a tattoo. So what are you doing? No, <laughs> dude, what does my tattoo say? Sweet. What about mine? Dude, what does mine say? Sweet. What about mine? Dude, what does mine say? Sweet. Dude, what does mine say? Sweet. What about mine? Dude, what does mine say? Sweet. Dude, what does mine say? Swag! You idiot! Idiot! Yo, going directly to Twitter. If you've been following along, you'll know that I tweet out my ideas for these videos and the ones that get the highest engagement and interaction, I'm going to make videos on. So the one today is titled Boz in Sherwood on Twitter at HillerFit. Got 12 likes, which isn't anything crazy, but it's more than a lot of the other ones have been getting interaction on. Number one comment is from Chet CF. Let's go, he says, like. Chet is one of the original 500 subscribers, and yesterday I asked for maybe the third time ever for people to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and 64 people subscribed, which is awesome. And I suppose I'll say it again, half of you guys don't subscribe, and if you do, that's cool, thanks. And if you don't, that's cool too. I'm just glad that you're here for this one. Hi, I'm Peter. What are you doing for lunch today? Hey, look who's back. Table for three. To... I was asking what you were doing for lunch. Would you like to have lunch with me? Are you are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. Uh, I don't think I'm supposed to do that. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm gonna go next door and get a table. And if you'd like to join me, uh, no big deal. All right. And if not, that's cool too. Okay. That's cool. Thanks. And if you don't, that's cool too. I'm just glad that you're here for this one. Okay. All right. When you say uh, next door, do you mean chilies or, or flingers? Flingers. Okay. But Chet, one of the original 500, is also on Twitter, deciding the direction of the channel from that location. Oli Zans, play on OnlyFans, says, loves the podcast, and I can listen to them talk programming all day. Again, that's in relation to Boz and Sherwood. And also, when I put up just Boz and Sherwood, I have a little bit of Dave Castro going on in my head. It's like, do people understand where I'm going to go with this YouTube video? It's like, Boz and Sherwood, okay, it's a little bit more direct than those open hints used to be from Castro, but they're still rather abstract. It's like, what's he gonna talk about in relation to Boz and Sherwood? Candon Moody thinks that I might be talking about his unaffiliation with Lynchpin and didn't he keep working with CrossFit after Floyd 19? I always found that crappy of him. He's going to keep the nice income, but he's going to not make a stand with his affiliation. He's going to get rid of the thing that costs him money. He wanted to hear about that. I've spoken about this a little bit, Canyon Moody. My opinion on that is I've looked around a little bit on the internet in relation to Lynchpin and his possible de-affiliation. I found somewhere that he put up a poll in his group page, whether it be Facebook or wherever, and it said, do you guys think that we should unaffiliate? 90% of his population said that they didn't give a shit or that they wanted for him to keep the affiliation, while no more than 10 people said that they rather he did not re-affiliate. There's also right around that time, and I remember seeing this as well, Lynchpin was hiding comments on their page or maybe even entirely deleting posts. This is when all of the games athletes were putting up the black screens that said, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. What I recall is, as you remember, maybe I was an affiliate owner at that point in time. I remember that if I said anything to anybody, there would be people who would be upset about it. So if, for example, I were to state my opinion, which would be, I don't think anyone knows what the fuck Greg Glassman was trying to say by that, and I think you're taking it entirely out of context. The way the media was portraying everything, it would have gone down really, really poorly for myself as an affiliate. And if at that point in time, we had about 140 members, which I believe to be accurate, and it pissed off 20 to 30 of them, that might be the entirety of my salary, or it might be the amount of money that I can pay the people who I had coaching alongside me. And all I know is that I wanted to say absolutely nothing, which also, believe it or not, got me in trouble. It's like, hey, when are you going to make a statement on this stuff? Are you going to stand up for what Greg Glassman had to say, or are you going to put down what Greg Glassman had to say? And I'm like, dude, what does mine say? So we da. Just like what Pat Sherwood had to say forever. I just want you guys to come in at three o'clock, have the best hour of your day, and I wanna do everything I can to lead you to that, whatever that might be for you as a person, and I want you to leave at four o'clock thinking, God damn, I'm so happy I was here. I don't wanna play politics. That's not why I signed up for this. I want you to be better, fitter, healthier people. And I know that it probably wasn't very easy for him having a much larger name than my CrossFit Alpha Dog affiliate at that point to go through all of this stuff. So Canyon Moody, the answer to your question is it appears 
disappears and I went to the affiliate map, he is still affiliated. I don't know if he ever de-affiliated, but if you had to ask me, I don't think he did. I just think it was a rough time for the affiliates. So cool. The thing with Twitter is now I can address certain things that people have said. That wasn't on my mind. But what was on my mind is the very not random programming and YouTube channel. I've been talking about YouTube channels and actually I didn't know how awesome this one was. It's got three to 5,000 views per video. I'm sure they also have a podcast. It's on the Beyond the Whiteboard Media station. So that's what the YouTube channel is called, Beyond the Whiteboard Media. And just about every single one of them is Adrian and Sherwood just sitting there talking. What I now enjoy that I do, and I think that I'm like patting myself on the back for this, is that I just kind of sit and I soak and I try to take in the ideas that are given to me. So I was presented with this. They go, Andrew, do you think that it's cool that Adrian Bosman, being the director of the CrossFit Games, also has a program for sale on Beyond the Whiteboard? And I was like, fuck, that seems like something that's really juicy. I can really dig into Adrian here. So I did my research. I went to the Beyond the Whiteboard program and you look at the programs and you see that they have all these programs on here body weight and ramp dub, dumbbell on ramp first straight pull up first kipping pull up first bar muscle up first ring muscle up first push up first ring dip first strict handstand push up handstand walk five feet clean one rm jerk one rm back squat capacity along with deadlift shoulder press and bench press capacity you see that in every single one of these adrian bosman's name is tied together with pat sherwood pat sherwood who also works at CrossFit, has for 14 years, has CrossFit Lynchpin. I think you've also seen him on the broadcast, given his opinions on certain events, maybe even doing live events in the past. I don't recall, but I think so. But as you know, Adrian Bosman in March of this year, I think was announced to be the director of the CrossFit Games. If you go onto the YouTube channel and you go to the first very not random podcast, number one, where on that podcast, you'll hear Sherwood say that we're going to be tied here forever. Random podcast. I'm Pat Sherwood, joined by Adrian Bosman, as I will be forever and ever and ever. And, uh, I love that we're locked in this forever. That's that's good. That's a good, reasonable time frame to get out what I think we want to talk about, right? This is from one year ago, actually April 20th, 2021, which is about 11 months before, maybe 12 or 13 months, I don't know, about a year before Bosman was inducted as the director. From an outsider looking in, not knowing shit about fuck. I don't know shit about fuck. It seems like Castro was the guy until he wasn't. Is that what you think? You think? Which means that in April of 2021, there's no way in fuck that Bosman could have known that he would not be doing whatever he wanted to do. And possibly what he wanted to do was help people get their firsts. First pull up, first handstand push up, walk five feet on your hands, how to get higher capacity in your lifts. He was the head judge at the CrossFit Games for a long time. Incredibly intelligent guy. Ever hear him talk? He's well versed. He knows movement. He moves well. And he's teaming up with another guy who does all of those things the same, Pat Sherwood. I listened to a couple of these in preparation for putting this video together, and it seems like everything that they say is pretty freaking good. And to go back to the initial thing that I was pointed at saying, Andrew, do you think that it's cool or okay that the director of the CrossFit Games has a program on Beyond the Whiteboard? Fuck yeah, it's okay if he has that. While I want to have everyone give their opinion on this. This is mine. He's not writing programs, right? It's not like the hard work pays off training program or the CrossFit Mayhem program or even my program where when you then go to an event such as, I don't know what the fuck did Fraser and hard work pays off program, the Canada East that was one that he programmed recently, right? Maybe because you've done the HWPO program and now you're a competitor over there, there's going to be certain things that you're set up for more likely because you've been doing the thing from the framework of the individual who writes your program and this competition. That could be an issue if it was a program where you're going to follow it every day. But these are eight to 12 week templates designed for people who are just entering the space. And if you ask me, I think this is something that would have been very cool if Castro had done. And at least it's available to everybody. It's like, hey, here's the rucking program. Program, which they also have. If Castro had a Ruck program on there, it would almost be silly for a potential games top 10, top 20, or even just qualifying athlete to not look and know what that program has to offer. It's only 20 bucks. I'm not saying that there is any tie together. I actually don't think that there would be any reason for a games athlete to purchase these programs. That's just me. Maybe JR has every single one of these purchased, and that's why he knew what Bosman would be programming at the games this past year with incredible accuracy. But I just think that it's cool, and I don't think that there's any tie together. I think Bosman was presented with the opportunity to be the director of the CrossFit Games and program the CrossFit Games, and maybe they aren't the same thing. Director, program, maybe Justin Berg is the director, I don't know, and Bosman just programs, but either way. I don't know shit about fuck. It's fine 
in my book. It could very likely not become fine if he's going to try to use that as a ploy to get more people to sign up for the Beyond the Whiteboard, very not random programming. But as it sits right now, I think that that YouTube channel is getting much more viewership than others, putting up a video of what looks like once a week, two days ago, nine days ago, two weeks ago, and they're getting about one and a half upwards of 3,000 views a video. They should be getting more because those guys know what they're talking about, how to program workouts, how sore is too sore, improving range of motion, workouts and travel, garage gym equipment maintenance. Like those are all great topics. They just need to make some freaking thumbnails. Looks like they have, but they could do better. And again, I think that it's cool that while you might have an initial gut reaction to something like I did, it's like, holy shit, I can't believe Adrian Bosman has a program out there. It's going to be totally mind bending to people to think that and they're going to get so angry and so pissed and I'm going to present this and it's going to light the world on fire. Oh my God, another sellout in the CrossFit space. That's not what ended up happening. I actually think it's a good thing. That said, I also think that it could change. So keep offering introductory programs, Adrian Bosman. And if you do need the, like your first strict pull up or something, go get on beyond the whiteboard. And I'm glad that if you saw this video and it was your first exposure to it, I led you to water. Now go drink. And Riller, out.